What's going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor, and today we're going to be looking at seven common mistakes made while writing an APA paper. I have been teaching higher education for quite some time, and these are common mistakes that I see over and over again. So by showing you these mistakes, I'm hoping it'll help you out. So let's get started. Number seven, no references. I see this all the time, and actually this is plagiarism. So whenever you write a paper in APA and you don't include any type of references at the end, then you are technically plagiarizing because you are getting information from somewhere and not giving credit for it. You always have to credit your source whenever you are writing APA. So here's an example. A student might say there's currently not a well-defined PhD in engineering technology which makes tenure processes at universities difficult. Now did this student know this information up front or did they get it somewhere? Well more than likely the student did not know this information and truthfully without a reference this wouldn't be very credible for the student to just say this. Another example is no in-text citations and this feeds right into that. Even if you add a reference at the end, like number six here, I added the reference you can see at the end but I don't have an in-text citation that is still wrong. So here's the thing about this. The student at this point told where they got the information and so with an APA paper, this is just a little quote, on an APA paper you'll have a reference section at the end but you can't just throw references at the end of a paper. This is a big mistake that I see over and over again. Students think they can write this big long paper and then at the end just put references in there and they're good to go. A lot of times what students are doing is they're just throwing a reference in there that they didn't actually use. So what you have to do is you have to have citations in text when you use them. So here's a proper way to do this. Now the student says there is currently not a well-defined PhD in engineering technology which makes tenure processes at universities difficult. Notice the citation here. It actually directs the reader if they want to look up where students got this information they can go to the reference section and see the author's last name and find the reference and where they got it from. Now here's the thing. Whenever you do these in-text citations it's generally the, the author last name, comma, and the date. This can be difficult. So I'm actually going to give you a link in this video to other people who show you how to use Microsoft Word to actually produce these citations and references for you. There's a website out there, and I'll link this as well, that's kind of the uh, go-to website for all things APA, and it's called the APA OWL. Again, I'll put those links in the videos below. Here's another example of the way that you can actually do your in-text citation and still be proper. Notice that at this point, it's basically saying the same thing, but I moved the authors out of the citation into the sentence. And so I start the sentence by saying, Hildebrandt, Giltner, and Payne, and then you use your citation here, 2018, state that there is currently not a well-defined PhD in engineering technology, which makes tenure processes at universities difficult. Notice I'm still referring back to that same reference, but because I actually included the author's names in the sentence, I don't have to include them in the citation. I just have to include the date at this point. Here's another one, wrong citation format. I see this all the time. And I, again, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about you know doing this wrong. If you're new to writing APA formatting, can be difficult. The author's last name should be in parentheses, comma, the date, not separate parentheses. And this is just one example of many that I've seen. Sometimes I'll see students that'll try to embed parentheses. Be sure that you use the right formatting. Let's go to number four, asking rhetorical questions. This is one that drives me crazy, is when students ask questions in an APA paper. Try to stay away from that. You see, in APA papers, we are stating facts. We're not writing a narrative. And generally, when you ask rhetorical questions, or, or just ask any questions at all inside of a paper, APA paper, then what you're doing is you're making your APA paper more of a narrative. We're trying to stay away from that. So here's an example of that. How would this affect students? So a lot of times students will lead off with a question like a narrative in their APA paper. So they would say something like, how would this affect students? This paper will look at blah, blah, blah. Or why would engineers want a code of ethics? To answer this question, we need to look at so on and so forth. You see, those are questions, and what you're doing when you ask a rhetorical question is you're including the reader into your writing. That's what we don't want to do. We just want to state the facts. We do not want to be a narrative. We do not want to include the reader 
or the author for that matter into this paper, which leads into number three, writing in first or second person. Now I've already created a short video on how to avoid writing in first and second person for APA papers. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail with that. I will link that below, but this is another one that's really hard for people to kind of, it's like a habit. It's hard to kick that habit. So here's some examples. As engineers, we need to take the NSPE's code of ethics seriously. Notice the word we, okay? And again, watch my video. I, I give you some code words to watch for whenever you're writing, basically words to stay away from, okay? But this is first person. Why is it first person? Because again, just like that narrative, we are including the readers into our sentence. As engineers, we need to take the NSPE's code of ethics seriously. Number one, the reader might not be an engineer, so you're taking it for granted, and you should never include the reader or the author into your writing. Here's another example. Customers need to understand why you are asking for their personal information. Notice the word you, okay? Uh, again, you you're, you are including the author and the reader whenever you write in first and second person. Try to stay away from that. Again, that is a hard habit to kick, but do not write in first and second person. Sometimes it is actually okay to write in first and second person, but as a general rule, never do that with APA papers. Number two, using an acronym without defining it first. I see this so many times, and this is, again, another hard habit to break. So here's an example of that. When colleges are at may accredited, it means that they go through a rigorous process to certify their engineering technology program. What's the chances of the reader knowing what at may is? More than likely, you probably don't know what at may is. And so you always have to define that acronym before you use it. Now here's, here's the thing. You only have to define it once in the text at the very beginning. Okay, so here's, here's what you should do. When colleges are accredited through the Association of Technology Management and Applied Engineering at May in parentheses, it means that they go through a rigorous process to certify their engineering technology program. Now, once the student writes this and they define their acronym up front, now they can use the acronym at May throughout the paper. Number one, copying large amounts of information. Do not do this in APA papers. Try to avoid this. There, there are instances that this is acceptable, but I always discourage students from doing this for a couple of reasons. An example would be if you were copying a large amount of text verbatim, let's say a paragraph, and you embed that in your paper. One of the reasons why I say stay away from that is because even if you cite this, let's say that you're supposed to write a two page paper, or, or let's say that you're writing, answering a question that's two paragraphs long, and one of your paragraphs is verbatim from the source, even if you cite that, well, how much did you actually write? If you were required to write two paragraphs, you actually only wrote one paragraph. And as a professor, I'm going to count that as if you did not meet the criteria for writing two paragraphs. Another reason is you're supposed to basically use sources to prove what you're saying. You're not supposed to just copy large amounts of sources, okay? And again, some professors will look at this as plagiarism, even if you cite it, all right? Because what you're doing is you're, you're taking someone else's thoughts and putting them in your paper that you're gonna get credit for. Again, you must use references. All college papers, especially APA papers, you always need references because uh, without references, you're not really proving your points. And so you need those references to prove the points that you're trying to make in your paper, but don't overdo it, okay? So don't write large amounts of text and, and get those from your sources. Okay, well, I really hope that this has helped you out. Again, these are just some that I've seen throughout the years that students seem to make a lot of mistakes, and I understand APA, if you're not used to it, it it's not easy. But hopefully this video will help you, help make it a little easier. And again, look at the links below to the other videos uh, that'll help you out as well. And if this video has helped you, please like it and subscribe and share it with other students that will hopefully help. Hey,